What up, everybody? Okay, it's rap time. Let's start off with my shit. <laughs> Shout out to Method Man, True Master. Ah, you know, I was about to do a poll one day, like, yo, what song am I playing, you know, obsessively right now? What Method Man record? And I was, like, wondering if people would know, but I, anyways, I ended up not doing the poll. But um, if I ever do a poll, it's this song. <laughs> I fucking love this beat, man. Um, you know, I want to talk today actually about Havoc, um, because Havoc was out here, he's streaming now, I guess he's on Rumble, which is fantastic, beautiful, I love that, um, and it's great to see a legend step in and kind of talk about what he loves and share his thoughts and things like that, I appreciate him for doing that. Let me just say right off the bat, okay, Havoc is in my top five, okay, top ten, top five all time. I fucking love Havoc. Okay, so anything I say here, if I'm criticizing a, a point of view, I'm not criticizing Havoc directly. I'm criticizing perhaps a point of view that he might have. But the fact of the matter is that I have an enormous respect for Havoc. Like, literally, I'm inspired by him. When I write that Blood World shit, shit that you see, this kind of shit, I'm listening to Get Dealt With and stuff like that while I'm writing sometimes. You know, da, 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 da. <laughs> shit, shit's crazy. Okay, um, so there's no way I would ever disrespect um, these guys, like, as people, I don't even do that to people, like, I don't even care for it musically, so I'm obviously not going to do that for legends that um, have really contributed so much to this culture, so that's one thing, I just have to get that off point. Um, I respect Havoc for even coming into the space and streaming and things like that, so let's talk a little bit about what Havoc has been doing. So, if you haven't been following, by the way, I think you should follow Havoc on YouTube. Um, for those of y'all who might not be aware that he does have a channel. I, I've been watching his videos, like, almost obsessively because it's like, oh shit, Havoc is on the internet? Like, <laughs> well, I mean, I know he has a, you know, um, Instagram account. But the fact that he's, like, you know, streaming and talking about stuff is like, yeah, obviously, that's an instant watch, right? I mean, and the subscribers are going to jump like crazy because, the, I mean, it's fucking Havoc, right? Anyway... I want to comment and kind of react to this particular um, video that he did streaming with his boy, uh, Dr. Todd. And um, this one is 90s versus Now, Stuck Off the Realist, Episode 2. Now, um, to summarize kind of what happened in this episode, essentially what Havoc was doing, he played a couple of songs from his era um, throughout the whole video, I would say. But it was like a comparison between... The stuff he loved kind of growing up in his era, which is the 90s, quote unquote, versus like the stuff that's out right now. So like he obviously played like um, New York State of Mind and like actually a bunch of Primo stuff, which, you know, it's great to see that he's a Primo fan. Who wouldn't be? Primo is incredible. We'll come back to that um, in a bit. But um, he also played some of the newer stuff. I thought the examples he chose were a little weird um, in a sense because he was playing lunar stuff from like Young M.A. and King Vaughn and it was like aside from those artists being trash um, these are artists that have already kind of fallen off if you ask me like you know I don't think they're not like in the now now like yeah those songs were maybe within the last year or so like the ones that he played so they're not completely dated but to me like when was the last time anyone was checking for anything Young M.A. like Young M.A. came out in like 2016 or whatever ooh we don't give a fuck about what she's coming up with now. She had, she had never put out anything that made people go, yo, you should be taken seriously. And I say that honestly. King Vaughn, I've never heard a King Vaughn song that hasn't been straight garbage. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm supposed to, you know, care that he was a serial killer and now he, and then he got got? Like, where are the bars? Where, where's the, the vocal presence, the beats? I have not heard a single decent King Vaughn song. I can at least say with Young M.A., you know, I don't listen to Young M.A., I never really was a fan of hers, but there's like a one, you know, ooh, it's funny, you know what I'm saying, you hear it in the club, you know, it was I, um, certainly not something I've played in the last couple of years at all, I would never listen to it on my own, and I'm okay with never hearing it again. So, that's why I thought it was like, kind of, like, his examples to me were a little odd, but I don't know, again, maybe they recorded this like a month ago, I'm assuming, um, so it's like, again, I would have used more modern examples of artists that are popping right now as we speak, if we're going to be talking about the right now, let's talk. And the truth of the matter is actually funny enough. It's the ladies, it's the female rappers. Obviously we're going to talk about Glorilla. We're going to talk about Ice Spice, Sexy Red. They do mention Sexy Red, but they don't play her shit. Um, Central C, um, who else, you know, like, I, you know, like there are rappers now that are kind of like the youth are listening to. 
Like, if we want to make a comparison, but, you know, picking out Young M.A. to me was a little weird, because I don't think the youth are on her like that. But, you know, the fuck do I know, right? <laughs> um, Fulio, you know, like, that kind of goofy shit. Anyways, um, so the attempt to compare the errors, obviously I think it's kind of um, impossible to do so, because... The eras are just too different, man. You can't compare the '90s to now. It's just, it's the energy is totally different. The aims are totally different of the artists. Um, yeah, so it, it's a comparison that just won't work. Obviously, from a music quality perspective, the '90s is literally ten thousand, a million times better than now, um, and across the board, whether you're talking about hip hop, um, R&B, film, whatever. I don't care what it is. Um, and that's not me being nostalgic. It's nothing to do with nostalgia. It has to do with craft. You can literally notice the difference in craft um, with a lot of the stuff that was made back then versus now. That's just the truth. Anyway, um, but there's a couple of things that these guys say that I'm kind of like, Ugh, I wish you hadn't said that, or like it's a little confusing. So, perfect example is this. Let me see if I can find the clip. Um, oh, you know what? One thing I did think was interesting. At one point, he played... Um, this freestyle by Simba and what I thought was really interesting is when I was watching them react because obviously they're there you can see uh, Havoc and Craig Dr. Todd Craig reacting this was the one song that had the most reaction you can see visible reaction from Dr. Todd it's the best song that they played and it's not even that great but the rest of the stuff was garbage you know what I'm saying like when you know you could actually see you know dr talk kind of smile or was like taken aback because that's again hip-hop is supposed to give you like an, an emotion it's supposed to make you move it's supposed to make you go oh or whatever um but the other stuff he was just doing this sort of generic <laughs> head nod or have smoke and it's like yeah this is why the shit sucks there's no feeling in this shit um at least here with simba control he was kind of spitting some things you know about like you know um sort of that need to keep up the hood fabulous to keep up with the joneses i mean it's a it's not exactly a new idea but you know simba did spit a few lines in there where i was like oh okay it's nice that someone is actually kind of addressing this very obvious problem of modern day but the song itself is actually not very good in the sense that obviously his, his actual delivery isn't great this isn't put in a way that's got any replay value and again replay value is the number one thing that makes people legendary the reason we talk about Mob Deep Havoc is because their shit has enormous replay value. It ain't got shit to do with accolades or write-ups in Rolling Stone and how many people, you know, <laughs> of the lighter variety like your shit. It ain't got nothing to do with that. The fact of the matter is that if you want to make something with replay value, it has to come from the heart. A lot of times it has to come from the heart and it has to be crafted really fucking well. You know what I'm saying? Um, and usually it's there's something unique about it because that person is, you know, putting in so much effort or something just so captivating and haunting about it that it just sticks with you forever, essentially. That's why we play Mob Deep. The inf it's addictive. The replay value on those songs is eternal, essentially. So if you're not creating anything that has replay value, you can never be a legend. It doesn't matter how many Pulitzer mumbling prizes you win. Like, we simply won't care. Anyone that's smart will notice the difference, right? So I think that with Simba's Control song... He's saying some real ish in there, but the song itself is not made in a way that's addictive. The beat's kind of eh, right? His vocals are kind of eh, but, you know, he's saying some stuff. And so it's one of those things you hear once and you don't feel like listening to it ever again. And, of course, the freestyle that he does after that on Flex is even worse. Um, oh, yeah, Flex. None, none of this shit is anything that oh, I will ever give a fuck about. You know, from, anyways, you know how I feel about radio freestyles and, you know, whenever I see people prop up artists based on some freestyle they did with flex i already know that's a whack artist in this era especially um and i've done a video on that you can take a look okay so anyway let's go to the comment that um dr todd makes around here let's see what he says he makes a comment and i'm like mm. no, no go ahead go ahead with what you were saying yeah nah i mean just yo that that just the the way oc and and the thing that made OC dope is he could give you all of that street talk wrapped mm -hmm. up in the you lack the minerals and vitamins. Like Yeah, it's just crazy. The, the range <laughs> of some of these dudes 100%. back then. And and you know, like Simba is a dude who shows sort of that same kind of range today. No, right? not at all. Um, Sorry. There, there's other people too, like 
Rhapsody is a perfect example. No, actually, so Rhapsody is not a perfect example. Rhapsody has no range at all. Stop it. <laughs> You're confusing the youngins because there's no way that a youngin will hear OC Tom's Up and then play any record by Rhapsody and go, wow, I can see the the mental correlation between these two rappers or the the the, the pen or the you know that 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 the rawness like what are you talking about rhapsody is <laughs> i haven't done a rhapsody sucks video yet i don't think i have um <laughs> i'm i'm chuckling because you know i love the ladies man come on you know I, i'm a lover i'm not a hater you know um I, do I listen to Rhapsody? No. Have I ever heard a song by Rhapsody that to me is worth listening to? No. Um, so she does suck to me, but at the same time, Rhapsody isn't really running around here acting like she's the best thing with sliced bread. And, you know, like there's a certain, I'm not going to say humility, but at least they're not, it's, again, it's not this annoying shit that I see with, with, with Kendrick and the bots and all that where it's just like, they're, you're literally fucking up rap and you're disrespecting people that just don't care for your stuff um, and so obviously I gotta respond with Apsy it's like well I mean yeah I don't I don't care for it so you know and Havoc does make a point where I kind of agree um, where it's like well if you know if you don't like some shit you just you know you just don't listen to it right and that's essentially what I when it comes to certain artists that I'm just like there's a lot of them obviously that I don't like and I don't care for I just I just don't listen to it I don't care about it it's only in the instances of certain artists where I think that they do something so like goofy or um, you know they're they're getting propped up in the ways that are just so wild to me that I'm like okay I got to speak up on this. Anyway, the point is that um, you can't just say that Simba is like oh you know has got that thing like OC or Rhapsody's got that thing like OC and then not qualify your statement. This is again why you know the older heads and these guys are older than me. And they're confusing the young kids. Because the young kids, if they're paying attention, is watching that being like, oh, okay. I guess it's just as, like, as long as I'm liked by some older guy, then that's all that matters. But they haven't qualified anything at all as to how OC and Rhapsody are remotely in the same bag of talent or delivery or execution of their music. Um, because they're not, actually. Not at all. Like, Rhapsody's beats are not hard at all. Time's up is hard as fuck. That beat's ridiculous. Okay, that's some raw shit. That's some like straight hip hop, no filter, no crossover type shit. That's a hard ass, aggressive hip hop beat. Rhapsody doesn't have any beat like that in her catalog, not even close. Has never even come, like, nothing about how she raps isn't even remotely in that bag. So I don't know what the fuck Dr. Todd is talking, Dr. Todd is talking about. Um, now, they continue to talk about uh, what makes Primo so great. Um, Havoc is like, you know, Primo is like a library of quotables, which is absolute facts. I don't know if I've done a video. I've talked, to, I mean, I've talked about DJ Premier quite a bit on this channel, obviously, because he's, you know, a brilliant producer. Um, I don't know if I've done a producer profile on him yet. Uh, either way. I've certainly talked about him, and I've certainly done videos on Primo. Now, Primo to me, and you know, I've probably said this before, but I think Primo is probably the most intellectual hip hop producer ever. Um, it's, but he went to college. I mean, this is again why you know, go to school, kids. School is important because there's stuff that Primo will do with those scratch courses that's absolute genius. And you know, obviously, I noticed this stuff in real time, and was like, whoa, what the fuck? And I'm not the only one, obviously. Um, have others, of course, noticed this, where it was just like, yo, how do you have this many quotables in your fucking head? Like, and you're you're taking stuff that's from random, like, you know, from songs and stuff, and, like, you're using it to, you know, to fit the subject matter of the course. That's, that's insane, right? Like, no one's really done that. I mean, Marley Mall kind of did that a little bit, to a certain extent, like in like one or two, like, but it's not the same thing. And really, Primo took it to a whole another fucking level. Um, so yeah, I think like if you want to hear a perfect example of this, listen to um, Rakim, New York, yeah, there, New York, yeah, there, yeah, there, then, then that shit is, <laughs> and all the different quotes, New York City, New York, New York, all the different voices. You're like, yo, how the fuck did Primo even come up with this shit? Scratch course, brilliant. Obviously, mathematics is very famous that he did for most deaf is fucking brilliant. Um, 
I love this one from Ill Bill. Society is brainwashed. Like I remember when this record came out, and I was just like, oh, like the. That you can't see what I can see. <laughs> what? Listen. When when this record came out, and I always said this is Ill Bill's best song. Um, beats crazy. What Ill Bill saying is crazy. Ill Bill kills it. Shout out to Ill Bill. Um, I bet you can't see what I can see. Right. So that's from um, Two Turntables on the Mic. And again, it's like one of those things where I, was, I recognized it right away, and I was like, oh that fits and that is like literally the perfect quote and it's taken way out of context but obviously into a new context again that's some that's some intellectual shit because intellectuals are about nuance and context this is something that again is lost on people who are not intellectual okay phony intellectuals pseudo intellectuals lames do not understand nuance don't care about nuance and they don't care about context so certain things are just not going to appeal to them, right? Whereas when you have someone like a primo who has that intellectual bent to what he's doing, you're going to go as an intellectual, you'll go, holy shit, you were able to think about that? You took something from one context and inserted it into another and it makes total sense in a new context? Genius, right? Um, I love this. Here's a few things we have to address. This I was like, I'm just looking at this now. And again, there would always be like, when I'm listening to Primo Records even back then, I'd be like, yo, what, the, what sample is, like, what vocal sample is this shit? And he's saying a sample from Play Dumb by 7L and Esoteric. Now, I've heard of 7L and Esoteric, and I think I've probably heard one or two of their songs. Not people that I necessarily listen to, but that's wild. Like, Primo will sample some shit that is so fucking esoteric, word to the name, that you're like, yo, how does this guy know about this? Like, rappers from East, from Italy or whatever who happen to be rapping in English, like, Primo will pull some shit. And then you'll, like, if you dig, dig, you'll be like, oh, that's where you got it from? That's why Primo's brilliant. Oh, and of course, this one. When I'm in the streets, I always remain cautious. Brilliant flip, right? Ed OG saying something, phenomenal record, classic record. Um, and again, it just fits. He's good, god damn, like... This one, we don't even know wh where that's from. I don't even know where that's from. Even the Rap Genius people don't know where that's from, right? <laughs> Primo's on some other shit, so I definitely agree with Havoc on that, without a, without a doubt. Um, now, moving on. Havoc makes a point about how he's really shocked at how rap has progressed. Like, he could never have seen it getting this whack. Um, you know what's interesting? <laughs> Not the only one who thinks Lupe Fiasco sucks. Um... <laughs> you know it's interesting because I I couldn't have like if you had asked me in 2000 in 2001 in 1998 that it would get this whack I would have been like fuck no right um, but in this era right now I am not surprised this is whack not at all like and it, it's been so whack for so many years that I'm just not shocked I saw it coming a mile away yeah, man, I am not surprised that it has gotten this whack. Um, I noticed it getting... When I stopped being surprised at the whackness was really Wayne. I think Lil Wayne was the last person that I was shocked at when people were like, this guy's the greatest. And I was like, what? That's when I started to really figure out what the fuck was going on. And I was like, oh, this is just literal marketing and rap has become complete pop and is catering completely to the casuals who don't know no better. Right? That's when I was like, oh, okay. It's just marketing. Though I don't have to actually agree. or And I know that um, I'm not the one that's crazy. Because I thought I was nuts when I was would hear this stuff about Kanye and Lil Wayne being incredible rappers. I was sitting there going, what? So, of course, when Kendrick came around, I was on it right away. I knew what I was hearing was some cosine nonsense. And I spoke on this when I was in verse, you know, various forms and stuff. Obviously, I was called a hater. People were hating on me hard. It is what it is. But the truth of the matter is that I'm not surprised anymore. So my point is, I don't know when Havoc, um, like, I don't know if he's still surprised or when that that moment hit him where he was like, oh, I'm not so surprised anymore. But I am not surprised, bro. Like with with Kanye, Jeezy, <laughs> um, Lil Wayne, Soldier Boy, 
<laughs> it was just like boom, 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 boom after the other. You know, Kanye was that Diddy shit all over again, but arguably even worse. Um, I think Diddy's probably a better rapper than Kanye. Like weirdly enough, or they're probably equal. I don't know. It's it, you know, you're talking about people that I just don't want to hear rap. Period. So yeah, it was it was a weird time, and this is 2004 when Kanye comes into the scene right away. After that, 2005 with Jeezy it was so weird, and at the same time, I'm you know hearing around this time, like I was saying within my Made You Look video, I'm hearing Made You Look. I'm digging into Nas real heavy because I've just kind of really heard Elmatic in full, and I'm going blown away by how great rap used to be and looking at rap completely different and realizing what rap really is about about how beats um tell you about the soundscape the environment and mind state of the rapper and then the mind the rapper um vocalizes that or puts that into words and just the intellectual and emotional depth that rap used to have and then i'm hearing fucking young jeezy and casuals telling me that jeezy is the best thing they've ever heard people that never listened to rap i remember literally when i was uh, hanging out in montreal like some of the people that i was going to school with who literally didn't listen to rap at all were now telling me the young jeezy was the dopest thing they'd ever heard and i'm sitting there going like what the fuck you know so i'm not surprised at all i wonder when havoc really figured it out in terms of like yo this shit is whack as hell now um there is an article actually i want to share with y'all that i think is really fascinating uh, this one was from back in the day written by a guy named jay zone shout out to hip-hop dx hip-hop dx has been around for quite a while i remember when this came out because i saw it and i was like word and i think this is one of the best in fact actually to be honest with you when i think about it this is the one article i go back to every once in a while that hip-hop dx put out so they've been doing their thing and um, when you look at the reasons Jay Zone goes into them, it's like, yo, you read my mind. These are things I think a fair amount of us heads were talking about anyways. And this article was written early 2007. So again, the point is that, you know, rap was, was dying, man. February 19, 2007. Like, we were sensing, yo, something has really gone off with this rap shit. And again, if rap... It, it, like, let me put it this way. We like rappers because of what they brought in that their eras were incredible wu-tang nas mob deep jay we go into them they made their eras incredible how the fuck is kanye west young jeezy eminem lil wayne how are these guys greats if their eras were trash and they were the most visible rappers in their own eras that doesn't tell me that they were great rappers the goat level rappers that tells me that they were actually pretty garbage especially if they were spearheading that garbage they were either mediocre or flat out garbage because it doesn't make sense at all if eminem and wayne were were as great as nas and could be put on lists then that era would not have been bad because the leading artists obviously lead the eras i mean this is just you know basic common sense now um you know you look at these reasons right clans posses crews and cliques i agree 100 percent. we saw this safety and numbers nonsense we saw this whole shit with the cosigns. I mean, look at G-Unit, right? Lloyd Banks is not a great rapper. Like, he never was. <laughs> you know, but because, you know, he knows 50, and 50 is the biggest thing on the fucking planet, and now all of a sudden Lloyd Banks has a rapping career. Lloyd Banks is really not that great, yo. I would say that in a lot of times Lloyd Banks is borderline whack. You know, now, there, obviously, he has his moments, like... Um, shit it can get uglier than a masterpiece sneaker I remember when that shit came out in real time I was like oh that's a cute line but it, again it's nothing that I would say should launch a rap career you know but I don't even think that Lloyd Banks was the worst offender of this there were so many of these people that I obviously forget now they were coming out and it was all this cosign shit it's like oh because so and so is the man then I can introduce my other mans into this rap shit um, and as long as that individual knows me, then you should listen to him and he's dope because of association. And that whole dope by association shit just started to really irritate the fuck out of me, you know? And again, people have done this, like The Roots did this, and I think the, um, uh, Black Thought actually said this on camera in an interview, and he was saying that um, even him linking up with the Soul Quarians, um, sort of, you know, ho hooking up with most deaf and common and sort of beating that scene um was it was a deliberate part of theirs to legitimize themselves so it's like i'm running with these guys so if i diss the roots it's like how can you diss the roots they're incredible they roll with these people but it's like yeah i don't care about the roots like that 
Like, and I say that with all due respect. You know what I'm saying? I don't care who you roll with. I just care about what is your stuff. What is your music? So I'm sure people have done this in the past, but it's way more blatant in the 2000s. And obviously, it's literally the issue now. You look with Cole, Kendrick. This is all cosigned. This is where this went with. Who are you with? Everyone looks now as like when you are a rapper coming out, who are you with? Right? And again, this is why I loved ASAP Rocky. ASAP Rocky just came out. He wasn't with nobody. You know what I'm saying? His album, his Live Love ASAP, wasn't featuring anyone famous. <laughs> it was just, I'm this guy named ASAP Rocky. What, nigga? And this shit is fire. Okay? It wasn't, oh, I'm with this person. I'm with that person. Cole, I'm with Jay. Kendrick, I'm with Dre in the entire West Coast. Right? Like, fuck all that, man. Like, you got to stand on your own one, too, yo. Um, and, they, you know, Jay Zone goes into that. Like, look, in the prime of rap, you were judged solely on your music. Rakim, Nas, Biggie, LL. Who did Pop Smoke come out with? Pop Smoke came out as Pop Smoke. I don't know who Pop Smoke was with. It didn't fucking matter. You know what I'm saying? Again, ill is ill. Right? Um, too much music. Damn. <laughs> it was too much music back then and this is kind of like in the beginning of that internet era so you can only imagine now where literally everyone's rapping that's definitely a problem everyone figured out and again this is why people bombard right some people just want to bombard the market for the sake of doing it that's what Lil Wayne did Lil Wayne showed lame niggas that you just bombard the market and it doesn't really matter because quality control isn't a thing anyway Right, and that's how you become the greatest. Lil Wayne was literally the guy that did that shit, and everyone went, "Oh, okay, I should do that shit." Um, <laughs> this is why I laugh at Lil B's uh, stuff, and I think Lil B, and I'll get to Lil B right in the next one because this one basically says, "Too cool to have fun and no balance in rap," and that's very, very true. Um, obviously, this is why I'm a big fan of Lil B because Lil B takes it back to that comedy, um, that aspect of rap that a lot of people have just forgotten about. That was a big part of rap. Rap stopped having fun, and Lil B just had a ton of fun. He didn't give a fuck what he was saying. He was rapping on the wildest beats because that's part of the fun, right? When everything got so stiff and rigid and everyone was taking themselves too seriously and only rapping on this kind of beat because it's the one that's going to sell and all that kind of shit, taking themselves way too seriously. And Lil B brought some fun back. But the thing that Lil B did that I think was really funny in, in sort of a response to that Wayne shit is obviously Lil B just bombarded the internet with random ass songs um and that was kind of what was interesting about Lil B in that regard he was literally proving to you um even even in his songs being you know shoddy and sort of slapped together he was like showing you where rap was and where it was really going whereas they just like you know say some shit oh you know <laughs> I eat your ass like you know just whatever comes up to mind slap that on the beat and keep moving right <laughs> Yeah, man. And uh, you look at what's the other one? Uh, this is about the sample police. Obviously, that has really ruined rap in a lot of ways. Like when you can't sample with the freedom that you used to sample. I mean, Live Love ASAP is a sample, sample heaven, right? And they couldn't get it released commercially until what, like a couple of years ago, right? So, again, the sampling is a tough thing. Um, and then, of course, the internet being the double-edged sword. Look, I saw that shit with Soldier Boy coming out and Soldier Boy music, and it was like the laziest shit ever. Yeah, trick, yeah. <laughs> so to me, rap been trash. <laughs> and I figured out a long time ago that the new school, they're not interested in depth. They're not interested in lyricism at all. Lupe is not interested in lyricism as much as uh, I'm sure his stands think otherwise, but they, he doesn't care. <laughs> And then you see his favorite rappers, Ja Rule, or some shit. <laughs> Lupe just be saying shit. At the end of the day, if you're just saying some abstract shit, yeah, you, the lyrics don't really matter to you like that. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not talking abstract and dope. I'm talking like abstract and like, huh? Niggas was bleeding off their menstrual or whatever. You got a menstrual on my shield. What? <laughs> you clearly don't really care about what you're saying, you know? <laughs> anyway, um, that's a shot, I know. So... Let's get back to this because um, I do think that Hav is interesting, some interesting stuff here. And um, I'll go back to the statement that he made. I think it was around here somewhere. It's the same thing. And I think, again, some of the music, and, and I say this a lot, I think some of the music is dope. Some of it is different, right? It, and, and that's good that it doesn't sound like 30 some odd years ago, right? Uh -huh. 
Because then hip hop would be fucking boring. Right. If that was exactly. And, and here's the other thing I'm comfortable with the fact that some of today's hip hop, like, it's not for me. I'm this is true. Now, um, to a couple of things here. Absolutely, modern hip hop is not for me. I'm too old for modern hip hop. I'm just not in the target demographic. Let's be honest here. Um, I've also known this for some time. But again, I never looked at hip hop as a target demo type of thing. And I think also, again, this is part of the problem. I looked at hip hop as just music. So I remember in the 90s, again, before I knew who people were, I was listening to Mon Mona Lisa, actually, by Slick Rick, was one of my favorite songs in the 90s. Have you seen me walking down the street? I had no idea that song was made in the 80s because it was that fly, it was that ill. I thought it was brand fucking new. Real talk. Again, I'm in Saudi. I don't have access to shit. But when you make a great record, a great record is timeless. And that's kind of the point, right? It's only until like the 2000s when I got my hands on a Slick Rick album that I was like, oh my God, like this shit's from 88? I was listening to this stuff in Saudi in 99, bumping it like, Dun, 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 right like you know so this idea that like you know music is only made for a specific era and like once you are you age out then you know rap is, is you know rap isn't for you great rap isn't for you is bullshit to me because that's literally formulaic nonsense like rap if you're a hip-hop head you're a hip-hop head probably for life all things considered and dope is dope it doesn't matter if it was made in 1980 or if it was made in 2005 or in 2030, right? It doesn't matter. If you are dope, you are dope. And this is the issue. Rap has started to really let its standards go now where it's like, yeah, it's not for me, blah, blah, because I've aged out. I ain't aged out. Your shit's just whack. That's why when I tell you I know right away when Pop Smoke, I could see why Pop Smoke right off the bat before a lot of young people even figured it out i was on pop smoke i was on asap rocky per pause all that <laughs> you know what i'm saying i was on cardi before a lot of people figured the shit out because again dope is dope and to have's point yeah it is boring for somebody to be you know the the new or trying to do sort of this old ass um version of nas right like I remember talking to uh, my cousin of mine who's from Brooklyn when I was living out there and um, I was playing him um, R.I.P. This is when R.I.P. came out, right? And uh, he was like, yo, this shit, like, he was like, listen to him, he was like, this is fucking weird. And he's like one of them, you know, stuck in the 90s niggas, right? He's older than me. But, uh, but then he was like, you know, I guess like not everybody wants to be, you know, Biggie or Nas. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's boring. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I love Nas. I love Biggie. You know what I'm saying? I want to hear Nas 2.0. I don't want to hear Nas 0.2. And that's what the vast majority of these people who are so-called lyricists to me, they sound like Nas 0.2. It's like you're like, like your rhyme, <laughs> your rhyme schemes and, and your lyrics to me are like whacker than shit that was in the 80s type shit. Yes, you've got more words and there's a certain sort of you know, there's a certain standard that's been set. But if I look at it in terms of the actual imagination involved, like people in the 80s with barely any quote-unquote lyricism are more imaginative than you, right? You are Nas 0.2. I don't want to hear that shit. If you're going to give me Nas 2.0, I'll take that. But we're not going backward. That's just the truth of the matter. So, you know, the truth also is that um, very differently in this era, you know, people are just trying to get lit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Very few of the youth are trying to do what Have and them did. You know, very, very few. Like, obviously, Rocky, when Rocky came out, Live Love ASAP, ASAP, Mob, Mob, Deep, right? They were inspired. They were really trying to do something with the music. But their motivations are completely different now, man. You know, like, this is the other thing that I think is interesting when you kind of compare eras. You see, you can't compare the eras. You know what I'm saying? Now people are just trying to get lit. Like, you know what I'm saying? And by lit, it's not even like the music is going to make them lit in the sense of this song is going to move my emotions where I feel euphoric. No, no, no. They're trying to get lit in terms of Instagram likes and views and, and computer shit. Okay? Algorithms. They're trying to be seen so that they can see, get the bad as just the, the whatever and material possessions. It's a completely different motivation. Okay, um, so it's not going to be comparable. There's zero interest in making dope shit. That's why these guys don't make anything that is going to have any kind of staying power. They don't care about that shit. Like, in fact, the staying power stuff takes too long to figure out. 
Like, who the fuck is sitting there listening to bass? You hear bass the first time, it's weird as fuck, you move on. You want to hear something that sounds like what's going on right now, right? That's the mindset of a lot of these people. So, yeah. Um, now, in summary, there's other things here. They, they kind of go on to play some more shit. Um, they played some, like, 2 Chains, Lil Wayne, ben, you know, Benny the Butcher, whack-ass shit. And uh, <laughs> have start smoking. You know, it's, you could kind of see in the video. Um, he's look, he looks bored. <coughs> Well, I'm bored. Um, and Todd's doing the generic, you know, head nod. <laughs> His eyes mentally gone. <laughs> His eyes are open, but he's mentally not there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think these guys uh, have some, uh, you know, questionable taste in the newer shit, necessarily. But, you know, again, it's uh, an interesting episode. I'm, I'm glad that I was, you know, able to sort of uh, take it in. Um, all things considered and like you know it's great that these guys can give their opinion you know live and i respect them for doing that like i said you know ultimately um you know not everybody has that um balls you know because you know and he doesn't have to do it havoc could be like many other pioneers who just sit back um when you know legendary people and don't really say shit at all like you know what i'm saying um so, you know, the fact that he did is cool. Now, obviously, I think the examples are lame, but um, that's just my opinion, you know. So, shout out to Have Man, shout out to Dr. Todd Craig, and, um, you know, I would, uh, you know, if I ever got a chance to talk to either of them, I would definitely sort of challenge, like, a few of their tastes. I've seen, you know, when I was in New York, I knew one dude. I literally knew one, I think I heard Griselda literally once. Um, you know, it was one dude, project dude, that was playing Griselda in the car. But again, it's smoking music. It's like, you know, you're sitting there and smoking. And it's like, well, I can sit and smoke to anything, really. You know what I'm saying? If it's Especially if it's low energy, because you're smoking. But I, don't, I never really looked at hip-hop as smoking music. I got to be real with you. Even though, yes, I know a lot of people um, and a lot of the classic rappers and stuff like that, like, you can smoke to their music, sure, certainly. You can chill. And that was kind of what was so cool about the way those beats were made is that they were like kind of druggy and like you you know metaphysical in that regard in the 90s they were slow enough that you could chill to them but hype enough that you could dance to them you know it was like you know it was a certain energy but again that's the point they were it was like you look at something like rather unique right let's let me play rather unique fucking classic right rock the house like, like this is the kind of beat you can smoke to if you so choose. But I can also be outside of the venue, club, whatever, and like, let's go, let's get it in, right? Eh, right. So, but dude, Griselda don't sound like this. Griselda don't sound like this at all. This shit's drumless. So it's just literal, like druggy, like you know, I'm gonna sit in my in my tiny little beat up car and and get zooted. Like, I'm sorry, I can't relate. That's not my lifestyle, okay? So, anyway. I've said enough. Peace and love, yo. One.